What is going on, everybody? It's Trey here. And we are here for the NFL Week 15 picks, locks, and upsets. Everybody cracks up because I guess Trey is a terrible host. We've been doing this now, I mean, not for 15 weeks, because I mean, there was some COVID leave in between there, but I have been pretty good at doing these intros. One take, natural conversation, boom, boom, boom. I've been hammered on this podcast. I've, you know, everything in between. Today I'm fine as hell. And I've fucked up the intro. Y'all let me have it. And I said I was a fuck up at the beginning. And caught everybody lacking. Fitz, tell me how bad of a host I am. I should just stop doing YouTube at this point. I mean, you already you already told me, you know, off camera, you said, hey, nobody out working me. Oh Everybody. yeah, yeah. But, well, you know, because you really... deserve that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I mean, there's never going to be a full one. NFL season where we don't miss at least one week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd, yeah. At this point, it's it's a crew takeover on Treeb Talks and a season that you know this should be Colge Talks. Yeah, you know, it should be. It's a season of ups and downs, mistakes, but we get Earth through things. it. <laughs> Mistakes <laughs> in the point system, everything. You all know, you it. you put you put four kids that probably all graduated with like a two point something GPA. No, with a I bunch of math. I graduated with three point one. Did Fuck you really? You. Fuck you guys. I yeah, didn't. Yeah, I three point one. I had one C my senior year. Three point one. I was not very good. At <laughs> Me and Brian were holding it down. Well, I was good at math though, so maybe I. Yeah. Only thing that I wasn't good at was science, and I was I got a B on that. Uh, B in yeah. science. English wasn't my forte. Yeah. Likewise. Well, one thing that uh, Cam has been good at is picking games this season. You uh, picked an upset for your boys, the Patriots, off a of coming up off of a hot win. The week before to come in and beat the Rams, that didn't happen. Is Bill Belichick still the GOAT? You know, uh, yeah, I still think he is. Uh, you know, you have to look at what he has still done to the team and what he has been given, especially with this year. Eight of the, eight of the players opting out. Your franchise quarterback, the greatest quarterback of all time, leaving. And I mean, so like that, 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 those two things are, is going to play a big factor in how you have to play, who's going to replace them, how they're going to feel about replacing them and how they're going to act and how the team's going to act, who you're going to replace in that. And then most of our defense is gone. Mm-hmm. So that did not help at all either. So, but me, me personally, yes, I'm a little biased on a Patriots fan, but even if I wasn't, I would still say, yeah, Bill Belichick, he's, he's doing pretty good with what he's got. Because I feel like if any other coach had what they have, they'd be a lot worse. So how much of you actually thought that the Patriots were going to upset the Rams and how much of it was you just needing to have two upset picks? Uh, You know, I honestly thought it was going to be about a 30 to 70% chance. 30% them winning, 70% them chance of them losing. So it was just a, it was a very high risk, low reward. For it, but uh, I I risked it for the biscuit and didn't yeah. get it. And you and you gotta you gotta respect moves like that. And yeah. and you know uh, this week too, we are going to reset the teams. Uh, the locks and the upsets are now just you know games that we feel like we want to lock and games that we want to upset because you know it's getting to the point where every week somebody is you know almost having to pick the Jets as an upset. And I know last week someone had to pick the Jets as an upset. And that was you too, Cam, wasn't well, it? No, last, no. Week, last week we did the double upset. Yeah, we did, the, yeah, we yeah, did no, the double I, upset. I did the week before that. Uh, it was when like when the it wasn't when the Seahawks played the Jets. I think it was the week before that actually. I think mine was after. So we star framed on the Seahawks and the Jets last week. I chose them. Was yeah, upset. yeah, that's you chose the Jets. <laughs> yeah, you chose the Jets upset. Man, the Jets. You know, I asked this like a couple weeks ago about tanking for Denver. I, for Trevor. I asked this a couple weeks ago about this being like the worst, like out of the 0 16 teams. If this team goes 0 16, they have a case. I think they are playing extraordinarily bad football fits. What do you think? I think until their starting quarterback walks, 
willingly out of the back of the end zone, not knowing that getting a safety, they will never be the worst. Oh, and sixteen team. I I don't know, man. That I was the Lions. The quarterback see, literally kids, walks out of the back of the end zone, not knowing. Lost yeah, every game. I, I honestly, I, I would it honestly have to. I would honestly have to. They agree got with blown that. out every week too. Yeah, I honestly have to agree. Yeah, because the, the Jets, Jets have still had some competitive yeah, games, the even Jets, though they've lost a lot of bad games. Yeah, they're still somewhat close in some games, but then they're not getting blown out every single game like the Lions did. So I I would honestly have to agree with Fitz on that one right there. It's hard to it's hard to watch the Jets play. And that is that is facts. Now this week we had the two locks and the two upsets. Now, Fitz, did you find that this helped you, hurt you, or was it just kind of a wash this week? Well, Don't and without revealing your points, what how would you say? Well, a wash. A wash. Yeah, it was a wash. A wash. This, it was a wash this week for yeah. you. All righty, ladies wash. and gentlemen. So, without further ado, let's reveal our scores for this week, and we are going to start back up on the top. So, Cam, while being in the lead, why don't you reveal your score? Well, uh, I can tell you my locks and upsets, they hurt me, but they also helped me. So, they counterproductive itself. So, technically, they did nothing to me. They canceled each other. They they, They pretty much canceled each other out, so it pretty much fucked me right there. But, still gotten double digits, ladies and gentlemen, with 10 points. So I'm at a total of 133, instead of 123. 133, still holding it down. Fitz, I believe you were in second place. Yep, and I... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you that not good. You know, well, you know, we couldn't get a breeze, we couldn't get a Fitz. Yeah, why not, get, why we, not right in between? We got 10. We hit two locks, and we missed both our upsets. The Vikings shit the bag. I hit the up. The Lions, well, poor Stafford. He couldn't finish the game. And Chase Daniel isn't the isn't the answer. No, he never has <laughs> So, been. Has there ever been a more a white quarterback name than Chase Daniel? He's been like... The Chad most, Henney, maybe. And like, let's be yeah, honest. Chad Henney is pretty fucking like, let's white. Talk about, <laughs> let's talk about backup quarterbacks. That guy's been paid. And he's, Chase barely, Daniel. Yeah, he's barely done anything. Dude, you know, you know like who's going to be the next like franchise backup quarterback? Gardner Carson fucking Wentz. Minshew. I think so. Who? Carson Wentz. <laughs> Carson, yeah. Carson Wentz. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, Jordan Love's taking his oh, spot, baby. Funny. Yeah, no, I can see. Yeah. But I got 10 points. Bringing my total to 117. I'm 16 behind. So. 117. I am a ways above. Holy Woo! Next, next week, we're going to do a deal where if even Cameron gets a game right, he's going to get negative three points. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> That's just not possible. All right. So we are going to we're gonna continue the trend, and we're going to have three tens this week. I got ten points as well. So that's going to bring my total to 114. So Ooh. we're still three behind Fitz. And I like to say for the record, too, I was way behind at the beginning of the season. And that's now, and now I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm babbling my way back. I also think it's because you're just listening to me and Fitz. I just you think so? You think I'm just I'm listening to the better analysis here? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> you, th- sir. You, you, think, you think my, my whole host and just sitting back and letting you guys explain it has been... <laughs> Yeah, has been the whole strategy. Yeah. You got me all figured out. No, yeah. I just don't think it's been working very well for you if that's been your strategy. Because I'll tell he's you, he's playing what, the dumb card at first. Now he's playing all right. I'm playing. The I went like card eight now. eight weeks in a row where I was not double digit points, and that's not how you win. So you want to follow that method? Go for it. All right, and Colge, I got both of my locks right. And I got one of my upsets right. Two! Ooh. Ooh. Dude, he's in the club right now. He's turning up. And we might as well, oh, keep, might as well keep the streak going. I also got 10. Oh! oh. Right, my total at, boom, 106. Oh! oh. Finally, finally broke. Triple digit. Ah. The one point we killed you to get to the triple oh, digit yeah. game, bro. Bad. I would have been in sack or third. You, oh, you would have been my, right there. You might have. I could have been in second, got, possibly. Maybe yeah. first. Those two I mean, weeks were I'm not hard on me. Very high yeah, up. Yeah, they there. were very rough. Very, mm-hmm. very rough. 
You would have been right in the conversation. Literally. For, <laughs> for, for first, first place. Loser. For first loser. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. We're we're gonna have to we're gonna have to spice things up in the playoffs. Or just completely, you know, set aside, maybe. Mm. You know, we might have just put, we might just have to put me out. Yeah, we might have yeah. to just crown you or something. I don't know. If you guys are listening, comment down below some ideas you guys have for the playoffs or something that you guys would like to see. Make sure you comment and we will read it and reply. So for Thursday night football, a game that we have constantly agreed on. I think this one is a tough one for me. We got the Chargers, we got the Raiders. Fitz, who do you got? I'm going to take the Raiders. Uh, Josh Jacobs came back, he trolled his fantasy owners, said he wasn't playing, Bad. played, and it was super bad. Tease me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think he'll get back to doing what he does. He kind of had a rough week last week, they didn't really look very good. The Colts Colts are just a really good team, honestly. The Colts look, continue to look good every week, so I just think this Raiders team's going to get it done. Darren Waller, 120 yards, two touchdowns, that's what's happening. All right, the Raiders, you know, continue to get back on track. Hold you to you. I'm going to have to agree with Fitz. I think they get back on track. Josh Jacobs, 99 yards rushing, one touchdown. There you go. I don't want Josh Jacobs to troll me like that ever again. I literally, like, was going back and forth on ESPN all day to figure out <laughs> what he was doing. And, Cam, who do you got in this one? You know, I'm going to have to agree with those two guys. I'm going to have to go with the Raiders as well. But instead of 90 yards, I think he's going to get 100 yards and two rushing touchdowns. I think that the Raiders are going to continue to struggle, actually. I think they're going to kind of be pushed out of the playoff picture. I think uh, more teams are going to show why they're more playoff ready than the Raiders. I think the Raiders showed that they had potential to be one of those teams early on in the season, but I think right now they're kind of showing that they might still be a year away, and the Chargers are a sneaky little, you know, upset team to get that done. So I'm going to take the Chargers to beat the Raiders. Is that our first Thursday night game we didn't get a star frame on? That's actually the second the one second. now because the second straight week, which is mm. probably the first time this year that we've had two straight weeks. Mm-hmm. More like two weeks where we haven't had a star frame. We're just convinced to go one way or the other on the Thursday night games. Well, typically. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not convinced. It's either all for the one or all for fair. none. We'll see. We'll see if Treve can make up that one point. <laughs> <laughs> the AFC West, Justin Herbert. Coming up next, we got the Buffalo Bills, who looked really Really good against Pittsburgh, Colge. And they're taking on the Denver Broncos. Who do you got? I got the Bills, man. They look good. Pittsburgh didn't play good, but they still look good. I don't know. I, Josh Allen, he's got it in him. You know what's the he's problem? He's got that fire, man. The problem is is that Juju... He's got a cannon. Juju freaking makes those TikToks of him fucking dancing, dancing on, on the logos. He needs to get off the TikTok. <laughs> Dude, he looked like he's. I think he got. He's done that like three times. And you guys are one and two since he's done it. Yeah, it's it's not good. Mm -hmm. It's disrespectful and it fires up teams. Oh yeah, it's it's the worst thing to do because like Josh Allen seen that shit and yeah. that was immediately over in, in yeah. his. Yeah. Like, it was nope. in it was in his nope. pregame huddle. He's like. Let them fucking dance. Mm -hmm. Let them do whatever. And you know we gotta go to that fucking first work. half of the game. We looked really good against them, but then mm -hmm. after that, we're supposed to be the second half team. But you guys fell a part. Mm -hmm. You guys, yeah. you guys started receivers dropping. aren't catching. You guys just... started even dropping more balls. I was mm -hmm. like, damn. And can we take time to say that Stephon Diggs is a top five receiver in the NFL right now? Top. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's even a, higher. I He's yeah. just super good. He's crazy. He is super he good. Fit, he fits like, people It's exactly what I said last week. You know, like I said, Josh mm -hmm. Allen needs these receivers to fit him, and Stephon Diggs is the perfect receiver for Josh Allen. And Adam Thielen also, I think, is a guy that could be considered like a top five receiver. And I think Justin Jefferson, you give him time, that's a top five guy there. It's crazy that like they just Buffalo and Minnesota both – got value out of that trade. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Stephon Diggs went to Buffalo. He's going to, like, play really well for Buffalo. And Justin Jefferson could be, like, one of the best receivers for the Vikings, and they've had really good receivers. So that's insane. 
So you got the Bills over the Broncos, I'm guessing, in this one. Yes. <laughs> Drew Locke is literally so average. Cam, who do you got? This is a no-brainer for me. Uh, I think the Bills are a dominant team this year, and I've always believed in Josh Allen ever since they drafted him, so Bills right there. I'm going to put that as a lock. Ooh, it's lock of the week. Locking the Bills over the Broncos. Fitz, who do you got? I'm going to lock the Bills as well. I think they're just going to steamroll the Broncos. Uh, Broncos can have that good dub they had this week, but it's just not going to rally well to end of the next week. I think Stefan Diggs gets a hat trick. He is that good for this Broncos, the Bills team. And I think also Beasley's going to add to He's his, good too. his 100-yard yeah. game streak. I think Beasley's really good for this Bills team as well. So I think it's just going to be a blowout, 49-10. I feel like he looks a lot better than he does now than he has on any other team that he has been on. I feel like I this. I feel like Josh Allen has honestly been the best fitting quarterback for him. Like how you're talking about Stephen Diggs, I feel like Cole Beasley. That's yeah. his best quarterback that he's ever been with. Because I mean, like he honestly wasn't too well when he was with Dak Prescott. Dak, Dak Prescott, or when he was on the Eagles. He's elevating players. So. Players. He really is, because even I John mean, Brown we, has he could you can argue that he has potential to be better with mm-hmm. the Bills than he's ever had in any place in his career. Yeah, we, like like they're honestly like those those receivers are elevating each other to be. Sadly to say, all like they're not all top five, but they all want like to be top the five. best receiving core in the league. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's because they all fit Josh Allen, and Josh Allen makes them great. Yeah, which is insane. They're doing, they're doing good things in Buffalo, man. And that's another thing, too, that I talked about a couple weeks ago. Dark horse candidates for the MVP. I mean, Josh Allen. Josh Allen's definitely, like, one of those people that Low don't key. get talked about a lot. but He's not going to get it. but He's mobile, too. I mean, he does things with his legs. He doesn't turn the ball over a lot. That was, like, a big thing in his, like, when he was younger. Like, the turnovers, they always talked about that, but... You know, as he got his first older. couple of years, he definitely did have a turnover problem, yeah. Yeah. and that what that's what ruined. But the playoffs has been, it, it has fixed the last two years. Yeah, because I mean, last year he almost got it. Yeah. Well, I mean, even last what like the playoffs though, like you watch him just kind of get frantic, and he started turning over the ball and doing those things. He's not doing that this yeah. year. He's yeah, grown, but he's doing really good yeah. with the new coordinator, and I think he's playing really good football. And I'm gonna take the Bills too, so it's gonna be the first. Star frame, five dollars charity. Your choice. I never thought that I would be hyping up the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen as Shout much out as to I Bills am. Mafia. Dude, I never wish they could still throw each other through tables. You know they still do. I know. Do Behind you know the scenes, they have to. And COVID, exactly. COVID don't stop the table smashing. True. No. Coming up next, we got the Green Bay Packers and the Carolina Panthers. Cold, I think. Aaron Rodgers is on a whole other level right now. You think so? I do. And I think Teddy Bonner. Aaron Rodgers right now is playing just as good as he played the year he went to the Super Bowl. I think he's already had like 38 touchdown passes, five interceptions. I've watched him play a lot this year because, I mean, when the Jags are done playing, the Packers are always on in the afternoon. That's when I take my nap and I watch the Packers play. Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams is probably the best receiver in football. He has like a record streak right now going for like a reception for the past eight straight games. A reception TD for the past eight straight games. And he's just absolutely phenomenal this year. I think if you put Green Bay and New Orleans like in the NFC Championship game, Green Bay wins. I think Green Bay is the best team in the NFC. Oh, Green Bay for sure wins. I think Green Bay is the best team in the NFC, and that's why I'm going to lock the Packers over the Panthers. Who do you got, Colch? You just took the words right from my mouth. I'm going to have to choose the Packers, but I'm not locking them. No. I, I, and I love Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams. The Green Bay, you can't tell me Green Bay doesn't always have like these weapons that are so fun all the time. Donald mm-hmm. Driver, Greg He's Jennings. always been put around people who are playmakers, like Rodgers. But like that's what I kind of hate about this new flip of the tide with the new coach when they drafted a running back and a quarterback in the first two rounds. If you gave him a couple more pieces, who knows? He could have maybe gave you a little extra. Yeah, but I feel like him drafting that quarterback, though, made him, like, 
But like put a little drive in him. Like, people like Jefferson like, oh. gets drafted. And I know. Could you imagine Justin Jefferson with on the Packers? Rogers, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have the potential of these receivers that keep coming in every year. And like even pass, LaFisca. Yeah, you pass up on them. Yeah. And it's like, if Rodgers had Ayuk. these, yeah. that's even more elevated of a team. Yeah, but I feel like they have more issues. They have more needs than receivers. Hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, like, you get... I think when you get into a position when you're a team like Green Bay and you have, like, one of those all-time quarterbacks, you just got to surround them with talent. Yeah. And you got to, like, make sure that you're playing for that quarterback. Exactly. But uh, Fitz, who do you got in this one? I'm taking the Packers. They're just gonna they're gonna get it done. Teddy Bridgewater's not playing good, unfortunately. Oh, bong water. I love him. I really <laughs> love him. Love he's the just guy. not. I I think he's been getting carried by Mike Davis and and a ladder of Christian Caffrey when he's there. <laughs> Jeremy Chin. And Jeremy Chin's been a beast. Yeah, he absolutely. He might be defensive player of the year for the rookie rookie defensive player of the year. But the Packers are gonna steamroll him. And Cam, who do you got? You know, I. I had a slight, I have like a 20% chance, I don't know why, of a 20% feeling that the Panthers will upset the Packers, really? but it's not going to happen, I don't think it's going to happen, so I'm going to have to stick with my, my 80% gut and go with the Packers. Alright, and that is going to be the third star frame by Miller Charity of your choice. And I fucked that up, that was the second star frame. Oh. Uh... And coming up next, we got a battle in the AFC South, the Colts, and the Texans. I wish this game was a little bit more exciting. Fitz, who do you got in this one? I think Phil Rivers should not have surgery on his foot. Just hold off till the end of your career, buddy. You're playing the best football you've ever played. I think you're just you're not you're not throwing Phil Rivers interceptions, and I think it's because your foot makes you throw different. And T.Y. Hilton's heating up. This he Packers team is getting roll. I mean, the Colts team's getting rolling. I think the Texans are in trouble. J.J. Watt's done with them, which means bad news. If the Texans got J.J. Watt, the franchise holder, just saying, I'm I'm done. It's gonna be a blowout. I think it's gonna be like fifty to zero, maybe. Yeah, I'm not even not seeing not points. Fifty is, berg. I think a fifty berg. I don't think there's been a fifty berg all uh, season. I think it's a fifty berg, and I think. Brissett sees the field. We're Jacoby, just gonna have some, I love Jacoby. We're going to have some fun up there in the Indy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the promo. Can't, what? Can't what? Got. Oh, I for sure have the Colts on this one, just because I know Watt is not happy. No. And if Watt's not happy... I'm not happy. Good luck. Do you, there's good luck. No chance of you winning without him and Hopkins. No. If you're Walter Payton, man of the year, isn't happy... No one's happy. The community sure as shit ain't happy. No, no, no. The Colts, who do you got? I got the Colts. And I'm going to take the Colts as well for our official third star star frame. frame. $5 trade of your choice. It is unfortunate, though, that J.J. Watt has to go through that. I hope he does. I mean, he's going to, like, get picked up by a contender. But, you know, it just depends on on, the who, on who it is. I think he needs I to go think, to... Dude? More than likely. Oh, like, dude. Like, oh, okay, come but, on. But let's, <laughs> let's really talk about it. Like, Bud Dupree I and T.J. Watt are outside. Mm-hmm. You have Cam Hayward. You don't really... I know two it's there. Two, it's the man. But let's let's put him in rotation. Let's get oh, J.J. Watt in, man. and let's just run it for a year. Really almost, go at it. I almost have a bad feeling Bud Dupree's not going to be in Pittsburgh next That's year. That's not good. Maybe it'll be J.J. Maybe I it'll just, be the Watt. Man, brothers. I just have a weird feeling. I love Bud, and I hope, I hope we can work something out, but I just have a weird feeling. Not good. A weird feeling. Ah, J.J. Watt, where would he... Where would he go? The Pitch. Patriots. That's kind of. I was, was low key thinking that. The Packers would be a good one. I can see him in I can just see him in, green, in green Chicago. Man. Khalil Mack and JJ no, Watt. I can't see him. I can see him trying to do that. Like, yeah. Go with somebody who's just a real big force on the D line. Yeah, or something. That's why I feel like he'd go to Steelers. Or like, the Rams. That's why. That's like my. Oh, top. Aaron or, Donald. Yeah, with yeah. Aaron Donald. Right, like a top option. He's gonna go to somebody like that. He's gonna. Like, it's like, brothers. hey, brother, what's up? I'll see. What's up, brothers? Let's oh, dude. Just run yeah, it. he has that pull. Pittsburgh yeah. definitely. Yeah, if they are interested, he's gonna immediately go there. But if they're to play not, tight end. 
Yeah. Hey, get Third string tight end. Not over Eric Ebron, boy. Yeah, he's good. I Don't the lot. fans hate Eric Ebron? I love Eric Ebron. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked him too. Even even when he was with the Lions. Yeah, I liked dude. Eric he was Ebron. always a salt. He was always salt on fantasy. Really, dude. I feel like every time I go on Twitter, like Steelers fans are shitting on Eric Ebron. They got good old Vance McDonald behind him too. So I, I miss uh, Jesse James. Oh, dude, I love Jesse, Jesse James. James. Looks Let's be honest; good. it's been a shell since Heath Miller. Yeah. Jesse James is <laughs> a dog. He's <laughs> just not the same in Pittsburgh. Right? Exactly. <laughs> That's why we're doing so bad. <laughs> yeah, so bad. remnants of Heath has, yeah. has filled his back ghost. in. Alrighty, coming up next, we got another AFC South team in action, this time against Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. Fitz, they were so close to pulling it off yep. against Green Bay. And you, and you just, it, it hurts me physically every time I see Matt Stafford lose because he always wants something new for him. And that, and this is another guy that could be on a different team next year. He's going to be because his contract's be on up. the Vikings. His contract's up. I don't think it'll be Vi- – I think I, I think Rodgers is going to void out, really. I do think I do he's going to have an MVP year. I think he's going to say, okay, you drafted your boy. Have him. Lay in your bed. I'm going to go to the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. to the Vikings. <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen. Go on somewhere if, else. If I'm I had to say it. Because he I, does like the cold. I hate seeing – I love the Lions. Okay, I have this, like – Heart for them because I love I love Stafford I do too. and I really want him he to do good and he does, he does really good every tough, time. One of the only reason why I like him is because when he when he threw that touchdown with that broken shoulder with yeah. his throwing shoulder. Ever since I saw that, I was like, I have. But that's the thing is he's you. always tough and it's like that's why I love watching it. But then it's almost like it's you're bound to watch something happen to Stafford something because bad. yeah because he has to overdo it. He's like, I gotta do everything. So, and he you remember he, that fake spike, and mm-hmm. he didn't get in the end zone. The only reason yeah. he got in the end zone is because he celebrated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, but there was like, it's just like all these times that he scrambles out and he gets rolled up, and it looked bad. I mean, uh, he's grabbing his left ribs, <laughs> and now he's, you know, Chase Daniel might start this week. So. I'm going the Titans, and it's brutal because it's always him getting hurt trying to outdo it for the Lions and Motown. But this is the last year for for Stafford, and it's going to be because of an injury. I think it's done with Motown. Last year in Motown. I think it's so funny because before that injury even happened, the announcers, I swear, for a solid five minutes... We're just talking about how tough Matthew Stafford was. Literally. It's just like, doll, his toughness is just so admirable. <laughs> Look at that man right there. Georgia tough. <laughs> Cold Judy got. So before I learned about the whole locks and upset stuff, I picked the lines for the upset. But I'm still going to keep it. I got the lines. I hate to choose against, you know, Tennessee. I, my heart goes out to Tennessee always. <laughs> Um, somebody somebody tweeted out fucking you can make a case for Derrick Henry to go to the Hall of Fame just based on his stats against Jacksonville alone. He has 700 rushing yards against us in six games. Really? <laughs> yeah, or four. There must be four. Yeah, yeah four. That seems right. He has he has two 200 yard games against us or something <laughs> ridiculous like that. It's like one ninety against the Steelers. Yeah, he has like <laughs> one ninety nine yard run against us. That's ridiculous. No, he's a beast, bro. Oh, Lions is my upset, if I didn't say that. Picking Detroit, is your upset, Cam? You got? I'm going to go with the Titans on this one. I'm going to take the Titans as well. I'm going to say DH, you know, yeah. runs through, continues to take that separation to win his rushing title. And he he's bounced gonna, back this last week. He's going to be the uh, first back-to-back rushing champ, I think, since, like, 06. Or something Which is like wild. That. It's wild that there hasn't been, like, that consistent top guy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, he's really just running hard every year. Keeps doing good. He's hasn't been getting hurt. He's on pace to do it again. I feel like the one year, though, he does get hurt, he just drops. And he starts dropping and dropping and dropping. Yep. I feel like he, once he gets hurt, he's done. Like, he's not. it's not going to be a season. It's not going to be like an injury, like a... A game end game. You're just thinking it's gonna linger after for a while and it's gonna keep trying to battle back. Yeah, and it's just gonna destroy him. I'm also gonna take the Titans in this one over Detroit. And coming up next we got a battle in the NFC North. 
We got the Bears. We got the Vikings. And, you know, last week was kind of funny because I think the Bears and Bears fans kind of got validation because Patrick Mahomes threw three interceptions and Sean Watson lost and Mitch Trubisky was able to get the win. It was like the first time that they could put the stat sheet up where it was like, oh, Mitch looks better than these two yeah. guys. Yeah, yep. God, I hate Mitch Trubisky. And Man. I hate those scenarios. Like, yeah, look at okay, that. you had one good game and Mahomes had his off week and they still won. Dude, that like, game was insane, bro. So, I mean, but I'm taking I'm taking Chicago though. I freaking David Montgomery plays so much better when, when Trubisky's is in, in, which is just a weird how much of a difference that makes. He had 80 yard touchdown run on the first play. I know. Yep. My fantasy team. Thanks to I almost dropped him. I almost dropped him before the playoffs because he wasn't playing good. Because Nick Foles. Yeah, Nick That's Foles. When the Jags fans knows he's trash. I'm taking Chicago. Fitz, who do you got? I'm going to take Chicago, too. The Vikings fell apart last week. That was not very... just was awful. I mean, they didn't even look good. Uh, I think Dalvin and them will bounce back. Jefferson will bounce back. This is going to be a hot, contested game. I think it's going to be 30-27. Bears win. Cam, what do you got? I'm going to have to go with the opposite of what you guys with. I'm going to have to go with the Vikings on this one. Uh, I honestly feel like the Vikings... Are gonna bounce back, but they're gonna get the dub. I can dub. see it. But they're gonna get the dub. Thirty to twenty. They're gonna. It's not gonna be thirty to twenty-seven. It's gonna be like thirty to twenty-one. Like the Vikings, I feel like Adam Thielen's for sure gonna get at least a touchdown. Jefferson's gonna get at least a touchdown, and Dalvin's gonna get at least a touchdown. So that's twenty-one points right there at least. And then, who else is gonna get another one? But it's it's happening. It's happening. Kirk Cousins throwing dots all over the Bears defense. Cole, Judy got. I'm going to have to agree with Cameron there. I think they're going to bounce back. Six all-purpose touchdowns for the Vikings. That's too much. Six of them. I say five. Minnesota. Six. Oh, if you got Albertsons, <laughs> you get free <laughs> fucking groceries. Let's go. Congratulations. Coming you might up. as well put that as your lock. <laughs> yeah, you might as well put that as your lock if you live in Minnesota. <laughs> say Treep sent you. <laughs> say you're there to claim. Say you're there to claim your freak from the fourth key from Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> from store number. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Store number five seven two eight five. Cause like, stop. I'm just kidding. They don't know where you live. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know your address. Yeah, no, they do. Christopher <laughs> <laughs> Columbus. Does. Yeah. No. J Dang. Shouts out. Shouts out to J Dang. I don't even know if you're in the military, buddy. If you're still watching this, I miss you. Hit me up. <laughs> Coming up next, we got the Washington football team taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Cole, who do you got? Seahawks. That easy, I. Yeah. That's disgusting. Now, let me tell you. The the, Washington you're going to tell me the football Dwayne team. Dwayne Haskins got his start, baby. Dwayne fucking Haskins. But boy, did he look bad. The bitch, dude. Yeah, this is what Fuck he needed. Him, dude. dude, this is. Alex Smith tell... has my heart. Dude, okay, Alex Smith has my heart, too, forever and always. But Dwayne Haskins, he's bro. A he's, no, a he's a dog. He's a dog. He's a dog, and he's good, and you're going to see it. Because when he first got put into a situation, he was in a dog shit situation. He was going to lose no matter what. He had nothing. Now he has he's in a situation where he's in a division lead, he's playing meaningful football, and he has an opportunity. He's going to throw three picks. And they're going to beat the Seahawks. Scary Terry has 14 receptions. Not that many. Yes. He's going to be reliable. Seattle's defense is pretty bad. He's going to be reliable. But not that bad. J.D. McKissick has a revenge game against the Seahawks. Even though he spent, like, not even that long there. Yeah. He gets like 80 yards and a touchdown. I'll Gang take that. Game. I have him on my fantasy. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Cam, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Hawks on this one. Uh, I feel like they're just... I, I honestly don't think the Redskins have it in I, I Football team. Yeah, I don't think the football team has it in them. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. So, it's just... I think uh, Jamal Adams going to get INT... And shit, a force, and I think there's gonna be a forced fumble. Do you think that someone in the area is gonna win free groceries for ten years? 
I think that's going to happen. Six touchdowns? No, five touchdowns. Five for ten touchdowns years. For ten years? Ten years. I think someone's going to win it. Seahawks? Seahawks, yeah. Five touchdowns, all purpose. You should be in the picture every single time <laughs> someone gets the free groceries. Uh, <laughs> so the hand with going. Russ. So we know the Colts So we know the going for the Hawks Russ. as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and your Albert shirt's all blacks. And your fucking Dr. Scholes. <laughs> Just shake the person's hand. No, it's just me shaking Russell's hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's the poster for the free groceries. Sponsored by Treep's Dog. <laughs> Treep's Dog. <laughs> Fits who he got. Um, Dwayne Haskins is awful. And no. I'll just start that out right here and right now. Uh, Alex Smith had him with a lead when he came in. Their defense scored a defensive touchdown to keep their lead. Their defense are also dogs. Their yeah. defense was looking pretty good. Yeah, okay, game. but their defense scored to keep them double digits. Exactly. It wasn't Dwayne Haskins. Well, Haskins didn't do anything. But he had, no, he had no protection. Smith, he had no protection. Smith got the lead. The defense kept the lead. And Haskins came in. That's all y'all want to talk about. Haskins was junked, and he's going to get exposed. Seattle is going to win 42 to, I'm going to say 10. He'll get a garbage touchdown because he'll stay in over Kyle Allen because I think Riverboat Ron will be like, give him a chance, you know. But they're just going to get dominated. Free groceries. They're going to have those all-purpose touchdowns. There's going to be six of them, though. So So, someone's going to win groceries for life. For life. I already Hope. bought a Dwayne Haskins rookie card. Hope. Hope. Now he's going to go what? I'm going to buy a jersey. Yeah, tough break. Boys. Put it on the top. Yep. He's like, the Brady. He's your next Jameis Winston. Value is going. You guys up. love him. He is. And Jameis he's Winston's be awful. better. Jameis Winston's better though. Yeah, he is. But wait till Haskins is a ten-year vet, two Super Bowls under his belt. Jameis is gonna have three. He's Somewhere. Some awful bull tanks. <laughs> That's why they. Why do you guys hate the the, love the worst QBs? They're not the worst. Hey, they love they Gardner Minshew. You don't, like, you don't like the, <laughs> you don't so like you, you don't pretty, like the success story of Alex Smith coming back. You'd rather have Haskins, who's trash. Okay, well, oh, by the way, I also seen a thing that I, I thought was... Alex Smith is old as hell, too. Yeah, but that's why it's a success story. I seen a thing that was cool that uh, said they should rename the Comeback Player of the Year the Alex Smith Comeback Player of the Year. They should. I think that'd be pretty dope. That'd be a good tribute. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, well. like, literally, when you hear the story of, like... He was supposed to like get his leg like cut, cut off. off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he had it infected. Yeah, it was just surgery. as bad as um, that other quarterback that lost his leg. Yeah, Joe Theismann. Yeah, yeah. it was just as bad as his. Yeah, and then and so didn't honestly, they should come back and play anymore. He yeah. was just done. So it should be Alex Smith comeback player after a while. You know who you know who came up with that idea too is NFL memes, which is really? kind of ironic. It's never gonna happen then. It sucks. They're probably blackballed. <laughs> Coming up, hopes up for nothing. Fuck you. Coming up next, we got a battle of the AFC East. We got the Patriots. We got the Dolphins. Cam to the path bounce back. Oh hell yeah, brother! I'm gonna have to go with an upset win with my Patriots right here. They beat them earlier in the season, and they'll beat them again. Damian Harris is gonna go off for at least 80 yards. If I'm being honest, Damian Harris is a dog. Every, everyone knows that we are a running team, and he still averages like sixty-eight, like sixty-eight, eighty rushing yards. And this is like his first active year of actively running for a team. And man, is he looking? I like Damian Harris, man. And Maurice Jones Drew is even thinking he's a top five back of the top five back this year, and he's shit. And he doesn't even have the yards of the touchdowns to prove that he's top five back, but. I honestly think he's a top five back, and I didn't even I saw that before. I saw that after I thought he was a top five back. So I was like, "Shit, all right, but." Dude, I mean, he's he's just a prototypical like New England Patriots running back. Yeah, I don't. He is. He's honestly, the next back to be replaced. Yeah, well, but I mean, by another back. He's like he's kind of like a Corey Dillon, like one that might like stick around, or like a. I, I feel like you remember Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. I feel like he's gonna be there for at least at least six years. But all these backs, like Michelle, he was a thousand yard back. Now he's nothing. Like, 
Like, yeah. the only one who's ever been relevant and stayed around for me was James White. Or, like, Kevin all these Falk. Years. Kevin Falk. Garrett. Recently. <laughs> recently, anyway. We're talking about a long time ago. Back, so. But, uh... Yeah, James White, James White it has been irrelevant, though, this year. I forgot he was even Not in the past team. game, but that's where he's mostly. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm gonna actually echo the same thing. I'm gonna take the Patriots for my upset of the week to beat Miami. You know... They they kept it in it with Kansas City and they they tried, and they were in it. But then you know Kansas City did Kansas City things and that was just insane. It's like you blinked, and Kansas City was up thirty eight to ten, like literally. But yeah, I don't really like Tua. Tua doesn't do it for me. Like, I just like watch Tua throw. He's just I don't know doesn't do it. I'm gonna take the Patriots upset to be Miami culture to go. You think you guys sold me? I'm gonna have to choose the Patriots. Kind of like Tua, though. Do you? Yeah, I, do. if I'm being honest, I he is do. he is very accurate. He's a very I accurate think I like quarterback. Him. He's just he's kind of one of those. Uh, it's like a. Is he lefty? Yeah. I'm going with the Dolphins. Yeah, I love lefty. Because I think the Dolphins' defense and that team sold on Tua. I think they're bought in. Oh, they're for sure sold on. I don't. I don't, I don't think he has to do very much because I just think they're really they're playing really good football for him. Yeah. They were in a one possession game against the Chiefs and had gave him a chance to win it. I mean it's it's tough. I think this is a tough game, but I just think everybody can game plan for Newton. He's had hundred yard hundred yard passing games and rushing. I mean people are gonna figure that out eventually. I think the Dolphins will. I think the Dolphins are uh, locking themselves in the playoffs. With this win. I think... Who's just like a quarterback that's... Just like a check down guy. Doesn't go deep. Doesn't really take risks. Like a, it's like a mobile Nick Foles. Brady doesn't take risks. It's like a mobile Tom. It's like a mobile West Coast quarterback. <laughs> it's just weird. I don't, I don't He's know. like a modern day West Coast quarterback. That's fair. I guess he did play for Alabama. So I guess that's kind of, he's kind of used to that kind of ground and pound fucking short passing game. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Play action. Yeah. Coming up next, we got probably the most simple game to pick this week. And we got the Baltimore Ravens against the Jacksonville Jaguars. But boys, Gardner Minshew is in this week. Very excited. That doesn't really change the outcome. I think Lamar Jackson's going to have like, the most rushing yards, but like this was the game I think that the Jags defense gets the most clowned that they've ever been clowned all season. Mm. I think Lamar Jackson has two hundred rushing yards. Damn. I think he has, or he breaks some sort of record, <clears throat> like most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single game, most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. He'll he'll throw like forty yards or something, <laughs> and like a pick. And they'll beat us like forty to ten, but yeah, the Ravens will beat us. It's cool to see Minshew back. Love Gardner Minshew, always will. Probably gonna be the next best career backup. Culture you got? Yeah, I got the Ravens. I don't really want to go too much on that. Cam, okay, what you got? Yep, yeah, Ravens. Not going too far into that. Fitz, I think the terror of Saxonville runs wild on this game. <laughs> I think who I think Calais Campbell oh, gets oh. two sacks and I think and Yannick he and got got play. Play. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. he strip sacks Gardner twice in this ball game. They're gonna kill you guys. But whoever get who your field goal kicker is, he might get I think he'll get three field goals. I think it's gonna be You think he'll not. kick three field goals or make three field goals? I, I think he'll make three. I think he'll kick about six. Whatever happened to Josh Lambeau? He's on the IR with the hip problem. That hurts. And uh, so I just think that the Ravens are going to mud stomp you, forty-nine to nine. Yeah, it's it's not going to be. I've yeah, Yan and Calais are going to fucking. The terror of kill, Saxonville is going to reign kill, supreme on that night. Kill Minshew. Coming up next, we got another division matchup, this time in the NFC South. We got the Bucks and the Falcons. Cam, who do you got in this one? You know, this is definitely a no-brainer for me. I'm going to have to go with the Bucks on this one. Um, the Falcons are honestly not really doing too much. They were, they were doing decent, but at the same time, 
they fall apart so quick. Like, they'll do really good for a drive, then they'll just fall apart for, like, mm-hmm. the next two or three drives, and just, they'll just be dark shit. Julio looks like no like a nobody this year. He's definitely going to be, he's definitely leaving. Matty Ice is looking like Matty fucking Stone, looking like trash. So, I mean, yes. like, and I, I, if I'm being honest, I don't think they should have gotten, I don't think they should have gotten rid of uh, Devontae Freeman. I think they should have stuck with him. I feel right. like yeah. well, Todd Gurley's doing okay, but yeah, I feel like though, but t- T.D. Vulture, he's yeah. had like twelve touchdowns, thirteen yeah. touchdowns. But I don't know. I feel like for, I don't know. I've, I also have a hard on for Freeman though, because I used to have him on my twenty uh, Madden. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he's he, he, he was a good solid back for him, and, they, and getting rid of him wasn't too good for him. So definitely gonna have to go with the Bucks on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Tampa Bay too, but uh, Fitz, this is a Atlanta team that. I mean, wasn't in the Super Bowl that long ago. I mean, you're talking four or five years ago. What is it? Why are they the way they are? I feel like it's 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 almost saddening because the rosters. I feel like it's got better. Yeah. I feel like they're trying. They've improved. They've they've gotten rid of players that they've been locked away with for a long time. I mean, that Desmond receiving core is good. Matt Ryan's good. The O-line's good. Mm-hmm. But they just keep falling into those games. And I think I even said this last week. I said, this game's going to be a blow-it game, where I was like, somebody's just going to blow it. Because oh. we talk about, and then some Colton said, isn't that how every game is? I was like, no, some teams just win the bitch and mm-hmm. lose the bitch. But the, they blew it. The Falcons did exactly what they do against teams that they shouldn't blow it against. This is a well-rounded team, but they always just find a way to lose. And are they going to lose this one? They're losing. Seven? They're losing again. Their ground game's going to they're going to be one-dimensional. They can't run. Todd Gurley's going <clears> to <throat> get stonewalled. This Tampa Bay defense is the number one run defense for a continuous two years. It's going to keep going until that defense, like. Sue retires and things start spreading out. That defense is legit. It's over. Brady's got it in the bag. And Cole, what do you got? I'm going to have to agree with all of you. <coughs> Hot take. Lukewarm take, take. No take at all. Julio Jones, zero catches, zero yards, zero touchdowns. That's an over. That's zero. A, that won't be the targets. first. That won't be the first time. It's not even target. Lage, not even target. Your lage take of the week. Yeah, we all have to have one, right? One lage sure. take. I love it. And that's going to actually be a star frame. $5 charity of your choice. That's going to rack it up to now four star frames on the video. Coming up next, we got the 49ers. And the Cowboys. And this game to me is not very attractive. Uh, fit to the eye. It's a, a battle of defenses, really. I mean, I the Cowboys, I Zeke hasn't looked very good this year. You're going to just have to hope the defense keeps you in the ball game. Uh, the 49ers... Nick Mullins threw him out of the game last week. I, I think he bounces back, though. I think Ayuk and Debo both get over 100 yards, and they beat the Cowboys. Just barely. Alrighty, and Cam, what do you got? You know, this game was a real is a uh, was a real tough one for me to choose because Fitz is right. Ezekiel Elliott has not been running this year. I honestly feel like he hasn't been running this year because. The one the injury that he had, and then to Dak. Yeah. I think those two are very two big factors of why he's not doing so hot this year. And uh, I I do think Nick Mullins is going to come back. But I don't think he's going to come back too well. He's going to come back a little better than average. So, I, I like, that was a that was a good lage take from you. So uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to go with the 49ers on this one. Call it you got. Yeah, 49ers. Nick Mullen will still throw two picks, one touchdown. And this was a this is another average game for me. This is kind of like the Panthers and the Chargers last week, the for, this 49ers Cowboys game. And I'm going to take the 49ers as well for back to back. Star Frame! $5 charity of your choice. All right, coming up next, we got a hot Philadelphia Eagles team. Taking on the Arizona Cardinals, Fitz. How you feeling? 
I'm picking the Eagles as my upset of the week. That's how I'm feeling. Are, are you doing this? Are you doing this as strategy? This or... is not a strategy thing. This no, is technically if he wants more points. Well, yeah, well, yeah. yeah that'd be fair. And then on top of this, I just think it was the ugliest W that the Cardinals have ever gotten, that I have ever watched. It was not fun to watch. Yeah, our you def- barely even watched. Our, I yeah. I watched it because you woke me up, and yeah. our defense was the only reason. Like our defense was so good, and our offense was so bad. Marcus Golden stripped, strip fumbled, and ran it all the way back to the ten yard line, and then we went first and goal, second and goal, set, third and goal, fourth and goal. Didn't get a touchdown. Didn't get any points. Our offense is so bad. Nugent can't kick past fifty. I think, because he missed a 55-yarder, and it got called back because of a penalty. Uh, I just think this Eagles team's playing for Hurts, and they still have uh, the division on the line. If they can win this one, they might be fighting the football team for the division in Week 17. You know, I like the Eagles, too, and I like Jalen Hurts as well, so that's, I, I'm going to echo kind of the same thing you said, not an upset of the week, but I'm going to take the Eagles as well. And, you know, it kind of sucks for where we kind of saw this Cardinals team at the beginning of the season to where, you know, they're kind of falling to now. But, you know, maybe they could win and get back to their winning ways. Uh, Cold, what do you think? Jalen Hurts, man. He's so. the face of the franchise. He, look, he, he looks good, man. I just want to say it. I yeah. don't know why. He'll probably end up being bad. But I think it's funny, too, though. Like, t- touchdowns. I think it's funny, too, though. Like, Fletcher Cox, like, he's the face of the defense for the, mm-hmm. the Eagles for all these years. And he's like, before the game even started, Wentz my quarterback. <laughs> Wentz is my guy. I'm locked in. I am not even going to give this kid a chance. Like, I don't even want to see what he's got. Mm-hmm. And then, like, during the game, they were up. Against the Saints, and I it like close up cammed him, and he's on the side like, "That's my quarterback, that's my quarterback right there." He's pointing out mm-hmm. to Jalen out on the field. It's like Jesus, bro, you can't be flippy floppy on that shit. I think he's gonna get shipped next year. Cox is out. <laughs> hot take. That's my hot take. And Cam, what do you got? You know, I'm also gonna have to go with the Cardinals on this one, boys. Ooh. I uh, I just have faith in Murray. I feel like, yes, that shoulder injury is bothering him, but I feel like that is a chip on his shoulder. Literally. On him. And, yeah, physically and mentally, it's a chip on his shoulder. And uh, I think he he's just going to overcome it, and he's just going to do well, and they're going to play good this year, play good this week. All right, coming up next, we got, Another episode of Tree Talks Rapid Fire Picks. We got the Rams taking on the Jets. Fitz, who do you got? The Rams. Cam, who do you got? Rams. Cole, who do you got? The Rams. I got the Rams as well for another Star Star Frame. Seven dollars to the charity of your choice. That will be out of my pocket, don't worry. (laughs) Yeah, a little mix up for you. (laughs) Straight out. Straight out of Albertson's pocket. <laughs> mm. Straight out of the ones who brought you free groceries for life. Now, this coming off of that matchup to this matchup is completely different. We got possibly a Super Bowl preview. We got the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the New Orleans Saints. Fit. I don't think Drew Brees is going to be back. It's kind of been iffy if he's coming back. He's got a lung puncture, all those ribs fractured. He's hurt. If he comes back, I think the Saints will beat him. But with that being said, I don't think he's coming back. Hill's out there. Hill doesn't look the same. This offense doesn't look the same with Taysom Hill still running. running. They're still kind of winning. I mean, the, the, Eagles, the Eagles, did you see how they looked against him? It didn't look very good. That's what I'm saying. Because Jalen Hurts is a franchise quarterback. And I guess Taysom Hill is a dick, so I guess we're rooting against him. And so, I just think the Chiefs are going to kill. You know, they're doing their thing. (laughs) The Chiefs are just a... Okay, all these other teams are put together teams that are trying to get a super team off the Super Bowl. The Chiefs are the only super team in the NFL. There is no other super team. The rest of them are great teams that are put together that can knock them off if they're there. On top, playing top 100% football. You remember when everybody, like, you know, I thought this too. When the Bucks got Leonard Fournette, everybody was like, 
so hyped. Like, that was the final piece of their, like, super team. He was, like, a healthy scratch last week. He didn't even play. Yeah. Like, he, he had, like, 1,600 all-purpose yards last year. Yeah. And now he's not even playing. It's fucking insane. Cold, who do you got in this one? It's hard to choose against the Chiefs, man. Yeah, it really is. So, uh, I'm going to choose the Chiefs. It's hard to choose against them any, any week. And they'll probably end the season with just that one loss. I know. And I, Cam predicted that one, too, I think. That was... I did predict that one loss. Yeah. The Raiders. And what about those ones? Is there going to be another loss on the record? Yeah, there would be if Drew Brees was playing. If he is playing, that's why I don't know if I want to say this right now because I don't know if he. We don't know if he's playing. You gotta choose. So if he is playing, the Saints are for sure winning. Y'all hearing this right now, for me. But if he's not, it's the Chiefs. So I'm gonna have to put the Chiefs. I said the same thing. Because as of right now. He isn't playing. Yeah, he so, shouldn't play. I don't so think I, he's playing. So I'm thinking I'm putting the Chiefs down on my phone. I have the Chiefs. He's got kids. He should just. Yeah, just but hang you all, you you guys here, if he plays, they win. I'm also gonna take Kansas City, and that's another star, star frame. Five dollars charity of your choice. I was kind of surprised that was a star frame, but kind of not at the same time. Yeah. All right, Colge, we got another famous live performance from the one, the only Colge from Colge Talks. Colge, take it away. Sunday night! That was pretty fucking good. It was pretty good. Dude, the fucking breath at the end. Dude, that's what gets me every time. I get I get shivers every time. Like the goosebumps, man. Literal chills down my spine. It's like Undertaker steam music. Yeah, like the gong. The dong. It's like you can't disrespect Undertaker like that. Uh, He just retired too. No, that one hurts. I wonder if he'll actually come back. He'll he'll never rise from the dead. He'll rise from the dead. He always does. One hand out of the dirt. Coming up next, we have the Cleveland Browns taking on the Giants on Sunday night. And the Browns, man, it's just, you feel for them. And it, dude, if I was a Browns, I kind of get where Barnage is coming from, like to, an oh, ex- yeah. to a little bit of an extent, because if you sit there and watch a Browns game and you're a Browns fan, you listen to these announcers, they always say, like, if you're a Browns fan, you've got to be happy with this loss. Like, you really just got to be proud of where this team is. Like, just talking your ear off after, like, watching that game and, like, mm-hmm. watching all that shit go down. Like, I mean, I would I would probably be a little pissed off about that, too. But, I mean, after, I, I hope after he, like, actually digested it, mm-hmm. he was able to appreciate it. Because, man, Baker Mayfield's playing his best stretch of football he's ever played right now. And, I mean, this is a year that we thought Baker Mayfield may be the 32nd best starting quarterback in the league at some points. Like, he looked really bad, thought that Chubb and Hunt was, like, the premier people of this offense. But now Cleveland's in a situation where not only, well, maybe not now after losing to the Ravens, but if they won that game, bro, they were in a situation where they could have won the AFC North. Mm-hmm. They, they had a chance, like a real opportunity. But these are games that the Browns now are going to win. This isn't the same old Browns team. This is a Browns team now that you should look at, you know, like a Rams team, like a Steelers team. Like This is a team that you need to go in expecting to be in a dogfight. This is one of the be- better teams in the NFL, and it's going to be a hard team for anybody to face come January. Fitz, who do you got? My thing with this, too, is, like, I get it with the Browns fans just because, like, like Austin's dealt – like in our groups, like like you deal with it. Like mm-hmm. they they ride that wave with going zero and sixteen, one and fifteen, winning three games in three seasons. Like they ride that wave with the team, and so when you're this good and you're blowing games that you want to win against the division, it is that that thing. Every flip of the tide possession is like that. I was with that with the Seahawks earlier in the year in the crew chat. Like, that's bullshit, pissed off, everything. Mm -hmm. You throw in the towel. This team's different, though. They're really good. The Browns, exactly what you said, Baker's playing really good football. They answered every every time they scored a touchdown. Baker's out there throwing a pass to Hollywood Higgins on the sideline, 30 yards down the field. 
and then dropping it off to Hunt, who just does work for him. So this team's really good. The Giants aren't going to be able to keep up with them. I think Wayne Gallman has 150 yards and two touchdowns, but the Browns are just going to beat them, 42-20. to 20. Cam, what do you got? I'm going to have to agree with you guys on this one. Uh, I think the Browns are looking real good this year. I think they're definitely a playoff team. Definitely not a Super Bowl team, but they're looking like a pretty good playoff team. So, uh, like, low-key, they look kind of looking like the Titans this last, last year. year. Yep. But, uh, so... Um, There's I, always that team. AFC yeah. Championship. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to have to go with the Browns on this one. Cold, what do you got? Who's starting at quarterback for the Giants? And it's it's Daniel Jones. He is in, and he's uh, healthier. It's not no, Colt I was going to choose the Giants if they're starting Colt McCoy. That's right. But they're not, so... <laughs> All the way. The Giants Colt, McCoy. <laughs> Colt McCoy has literally started for every he NFC. wins games, dude. He beat the Seahawks. Dude, he has started for every NFC Not East team ready. except the Eagles. Facts. That is insane. Mm-hmm. That's just where he shines. The NFC East. And I guess the AFC North fucking shines on primetime. This is like the new NFC East. I swear the AFC North is on primetime. Every single week. We got, I mean, we have three... Yeah, well, yeah, have really good teams. teams at, at, least, at least these are fun. Mm-hmm. At least these ones are fun. With the NFC East, you get, like, the football team against the Giants on Monday night, and that's not fun. But this game's not really that fun either. You got the Steelers and the Bengals. Cole, who do you got? Hopefully, with this win, we can gain some confidence back. <laughs> you know, because I feel like that's what the team needs. And I'm locking the Steelers... Because I walk, blocked them week one, so I'm going to lock them week 15. Hopefully that uh, that starts out on the feet and strength, bro. We need All it bad. Let's see. Cam, what do you got? Definitely going to have to go with the Steelers on this one. Without Joe Burrow, they do not have a chance. Mm-hmm. Sad to see. Brandon Allen going to roll into a dub, Bryce? No. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. No. Uh, the Steelers are going to get it done. They're going to bounce back. And they're going to see that 9-7 and seven Cardinals in the Super Bowl this year. I'm going to flash back it to 2009. That's why not we see it I think there. we predicted this at the beginning of the season. Yeah, but now it's 9-7, and seven, just like we used to do. Just like we did the first time we played. <laughs> and I'm also going to take the Steelers to wrap that up with a final star frame. Five dollars charity of your choice. It's a lot of star friends this this uh, week, boys. Yeah, we're gonna have, we're all just gonna score a bunch of points, I think. Yeah, great week for us. Proud of <laughs> or, or, or a real bad week, either real great week. No, we or don't. Real we bad. don't talk about that. Great only, week for us. Good <clears throat> yep. And this might be a franchise record for star friends. Total of seven star friends. That's like we. Might have tied that. That might that that might that's almost might half. Be a tie. Yeah, yeah that's a tie. Yeah, because that's almost that's pretty close to half. That's mm-hmm. I know like six is pretty close to like what we average, but getting over six is pretty crazy. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for our week number fifteen NFL picks, locks, and upsets. Colge, any final words for the people? No, I just hope I hope all of your NFL teams. Win you free groceries for life. That's all I can hope for. Hashtag free groceries for life. Cam? Uh, have a good day or night, whenever you're, whenever you're watching this. Fitz? Have a good one. See you next week. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure if you haven't already, you can check all the links down below. Make sure you like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.